Hey guys, welcome to Coding After 30. In today's video, we're going to jump into React JS. So the true and tested advice that no one follows is to make sure that you understand JavaScript well enough before you jump into React. And I totally agree with that. Although there's never too much JavaScript, sometimes we spend too much time learning one thing and we are afraid to try something new. So in this video, we're going to put all that knowledge of JavaScript on hold for a second and try React. And some people will argue, well, Paul, aren't you doing a disservice because you're making somebody learn something that they're not ready for? And I'm gonna say you're absolutely right. But another thing that I believe is that you should try to step out of your comfort zone and try something new. You might be surprised of how much you accomplish. And guess what? If you do get stuck, you could always go back and learn just enough JavaScript to get unstuck and to move forward. Some people might say, well, Paul, you shouldn't do something that you're not really good at. That. And I would argue is that you should learn the least amount of what is required to accomplish a task. And that's what we're going to do in this video. So I want you guys to actively push your learning forward. You could always step back, review, and go back. But if you're learning slowly at the beginning and you're afraid to test your boundaries, how do you know that you're learning things in the fastest way possible? And that's the mistake I made. I spent way too much time on JavaScript. And my friend finally said to me, hey Paul, why don't you build a React app? And it was hard, but I did take his advice. And you know what? I got to a point where I was more comfortable with React than JavaScript. And the reason that sounds weird is because React makes certain things that you do in vanilla JavaScript way easier. And so you forget how difficult it is. But the point is, once you learn a little bit React, you could go back and get more JavaScript. And I do this type of leapfrogging back and forth, and it's been really helpful to me. So I would like to share that with you. Now, with all that two cents out of the way, I will tell you this. If you know nothing about JavaScript, you should definitely not watch this video because it's not going to be helpful. But if you know what variables are, functions and arrays, everything else you could learn on the way. Now, remember, when you do get stuck, there's Google. There's also the comment section to this video where you could ask questions and I'll answer them as best as I can. So let's jump in on this journey and get started with React. So the best way to get started is actually go to Google, Google React and go to their React.js webpage. Now you could take the tutorial, they have a lot of great ones, but the benefit of me making this video is that any questions you have, you could ask me in the comments below. So today we're just gonna hit the get started button and we're going to try React, open in CodePen, click here and we are ready to start learning about React.js. So if you don't like this view, you could click into change view, click the middle section and open up the panels that we need. We don't need the CSS right now, but we do want to have this HTML site open with the JavaScript. So basically what is going on here in our HTML, we created a div with ID of root. And we want to give that ID because we want to use document get element by ID to target that div. So when we add our JavaScript in here, it will be filled in inside this area. And to kind of prove this to you right now, I could say not rendered here and nothing happens. And that is because it is being replaced by the React code. Now, if I delete this from here and it refreshes, it says not render. So here's your first lesson. The way you add React to your app is via root div and then we use react dom dot render to add what we want to display and basically react dot render takes in two arguments the first one is the element you would like to render and the second where you would like to render it and in this case in our root div now the first thing I want to show you guys is this here looks like HTML. It is not. It is actually called JSX. Now before we learn more about JSX, we're going to actually write this in pure React. So what JSX is, it's something that makes our JavaScript easier to write because it obfuscates some of the complexities that we would have if we were writing plain React to JavaScript. And I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So if I delete this and were to rewrite this in pure react this would look like this 
So what React Create Element takes, it takes three arguments. The first one is what you would like to render. It could be a whole component, it could be an element. The second argument that we're going to add here is for the props or attributes that it can. And for this first example, we're not gonna have any attributes. So we could either put null or we could just put an open object. And the third thing that it takes is what we want to render inside all of the children. For instance, if I wanted to create that same example we had before, I would create my first element as a div. For my second argument, I would put null because we don't have any attributes to pass. And then here I would put the message that I would like to enter, which will be hello world. And then when my browser catches up, noise here, we have our hello world message. Now, this is pure JavaScript. It's a function from React class, function called create element that takes in three arguments. One, two, three. It takes what we want to render, any attributes that we want to pass into it, and what the children should be. And we're going to look at this in the documentation in a second. But I do want to show you the magic of JSX. Basically what it does, it takes our JavaScript and changes it into more human readable JSX. So I am able to write the same example and I'm going to copy that for now because I'm going to use it as an example. Going back and typing my div, hello world. And notice when the browser catches up with me, it's going to put that hello world message back in. So even though this looks like HTML, this is not. It's actually the magic that React gives us through JSX, which allows us to take our React.create element function and write it in a very nice and clean way. And we will practice with pure JavaScript first, just so you guys could see why JSX is helpful and how it makes it much easier to write. So that was the first thing that I wanted to introduce you guys and we'll jump into more detail in a second is that even though this looks like HTML it is not it is pure JavaScript so whenever you get lost or get confused it's always good to check out the actual documentation and that's actually one of the best practices and skills you develop as a new developer is being able to read documentation and look things up on Google so for react ReactJS.org is a pretty good place to start. Like I said, they have a lot of great tutorials. And here, Norris and our React top level APIs, if you scroll down a little bit, we could see our create element. And if you click on it, it'll give you some more details. And sometimes reading that documentation is not as easy as people making out to be, and that's perfectly fine. So just keep it up, keep doing these tutorials. Remember, I'm making this video for you guys so you can ask questions, and I could hopefully give you answers so you don't feel like you're at it alone. And now I'm gonna show you how our pure React code get transpiled to JSX, and why this makes more sense, especially once you start doing nested divs. And to do that, we're going to go to this website called Babel. So the best way to get here is to just go to babbeljs.io or you could just Google the name if you're not sure how to spell it. Once you're here, uh, we're going to go to the try it out section and most likely it's gonna already be set to React. So what Babel does, it transpiles all of our new features from JavaScript and React to basic JavaScript that all the other browsers could understand. So here we could actually, on the left side, write our JSX. So remember again, it's not HTML, it's JSX, and that will transcribe it to our create React elements that we just saw. So, so I'm gonna write that same example as before, div hello world just for consistencies but you guys as part of your homework will play around here and see what you guys could do so as you could see it took our JSX and transpiled it into our pure JavaScript or react JavaScript by using that same react that create element that we used before so before we continue and get back to code pen and play around and do some practice I just want to add another element here just to show you what happens when you start doing nested uh, divs or nested elements and how out of hand create react element will get so what I did here is just added another UL with nested allies and right away you see an error so as you look at the error you see that it says adjacent JSX elements must be wrapped in an enclosing tag and what that's basically saying that any JSX that you write still needs to have one parent component so we could just wrap it in a div or any other component uh, to fix it. 
and see the arrow goes away. Now let me back up here just for a second. I want to show you one more thing. Now another way you could fix that is by wrapping the elements in a fragment. There's two ways. The short way of making a fragment which is like this and that fixes the problem and the long way it still works it could be react fragment which nobody does anymore just because you see the shorthand but I just want to show you this here so if you run into this in the wild you know that that's okay so again noise that makes the error go away and for now I'm just gonna go back to our regular divs so you could see that any parent element would fix the error so now when we look at the printout you already see how messy this looks compared to this HTML-esque type of uh, layout even though this is all JavaScript and that's the beauty of JSX it allows us to write very beautiful code which makes sense to us visually than worrying about writing this mess and you don't see it so much here but there are nested react create elements within create react elements and I'm gonna show you this in a second we're gonna rewrite the same example but we're going to do it in our code pen so let's jump back into it all right guys let's recreate that example using react create elements so we're going to delete this h1 make sure you don't delete the comma because it needs to be there so let's start we're going to make our parent div first react dot create element we want this to be a div for props we could put null as none and when you passing multiple elements or multiple children you want to do that within an array so the second element within our div is going to be our header element so react create element this is going to be an h1 no props and this is going to be hello world let's say you're awesome all right so now we have our header now let's add our unordered list so we again going to use react.create element we want ul for unordered list no props and because we want to have nested allies we're going to pass another array which is going to contain those nested allies ally for our list items no props and we want cat to be the first one and let's use the power of copy and paste here don't forget the comma let's paste two times we're gonna have dog rabbit and here you are we have our your awesome cat dog rabbit now look how it kind of looks neat you could kind of make it look nice but that was really complicated to do so this is why we have JSX and I hope your number one takeaway from here is number one that you know that JSX is JavaScript we see it here and number two that JSX makes it way cleaner and better looking when we type our code and it's very user readable so this kind of doesn't make sense to me so let's rewrite the same thing now with our JSX so before we write it in our JSX I'm also going to show you how to pass props I decided not to show you how to pass props and attributes when you're using the act create element because I just wanted to show you that that is the thing that's what's happening but you'll never ever use it you will always use JSX so now that you know that JSX is actually JavaScript that kind of looks like HTML from now on we're gonna use JSX for everything we do so let's rewrite the code that we wrote before so first we had our parent div within that div we had our heading I might have called it header before then we had our UL with our three items once again power of copy and paste and we had dog and rabbit so Norris all the effort we put in we have the same output look how beautiful it looks and at the end of the day this is all JavaScript so if I take this and go back to our Babel transpiler and paste it here notice how it gets transpiled back to our react create element just like we learned so now you could see why JSX is amazing it allows us to write clean code without worrying and being bugged down by what react is doing underneath the hood so with that being said in the next video we're going to learn about props and before learning about props we're actually going to learn how to make our first component 
So before I go in this video, I'm just going to create a simple component for you guys that we're going to render to our screen. And our component is going to be exactly what we did. Usually components are functions. You could declare a function the old school way where you could say function app and it has to return what we want to render. And we're just going to copy and paste this code. And now here we pass our app component so in a sense a component is a function that renders some sort of markup to the view you could also use class based components but but there's been a move with react to do everything with function components another way to rewrite this is to use an arrow function and again if you're not sure what arrow functions are just like i said before going over a simple javascript tutorial all you need is at least one and then you will be ready to jump into react so another way to write our components is using arrow functions and we are going to return that same markup and here you are talking about passing props I'm gonna this structure here call it a name and I could go into my app and I could have a prop called name and it will be let's say Paul my first name so now I could use that prop in my header and BAM I lied to you you guys have to <laughs> put it in the brackets and now you could see that Paul is being here and I could change that prop to whatever and then you could see it boom right there so guys thank you for joining me for this video this is what we're going to learn in the next video talking about components and introduction to props so your homework assignment is play in code pen and see if you could write something first using react create elements and then rewrite the same thing using JSX and as a bonus, if you like, see if you could figure out how to use props with React Create Elements. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. So the point here that I'm trying to make, if you're looking at the screen and you're still confused and you're like, man, I should probably not learn this stuff. Um, that's normal. I mean, that's how I felt when I first started. And now things make sense to me more and more, the more I practice. But the point is, if you don't start now, then you will always feel that way the only caveat to this if you have zero javascript experience and you have no idea what javascript is then i would suggest doing a tutorial with html css and javascript and getting that out of the way but if you have some javascript experience and we learn more javascript as we keep working on this react project and things will eventually start making sense the one thing that i want to tell you guys is that sometimes you just have to copy things without even knowing what they are and that's why i don't mind when people start tutorials at the beginning i mean that's how i did it where you copy the code you have no idea what it is and your website works or your thing that you build works because you copied someone else's example and the goal is is to do enough of those that you will start to actually make sense of what it is that you're doing but at the beginning it's perfectly fine and also check out the react documentation just browse through it you don't have to understand everything like the whole point of this video series is for me to start introducing you guys to react and most importantly for you guys if you have questions to ask me questions in the comments eventually i'll have a designated facebook group where we could all like a study group where you could all talk and discuss the projects that we're working on on this channel but for now just leave it in the comments if you have any questions don't be shy asking them and as always thank you for watching and i'll see you guys later